Pathway family, thank you for tuning in. God has an amazing word for you. So go ahead and check out this message. And after, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love you. God bless. Never take it for granted of where you're at. And for the ones that I haven't met, uh, my name is Pastor Robert. I'm the associate pastor here. Um, I didn't get to see all the hands earlier. How many are here for the first time? This is your first time joining us here. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. You could have been anywhere today. You could have been at the malls returning some presents today. I drove by some of the malls yesterday. It was insane. I just seen all kinds of cars. I said, man, aren't, aren't we done shopping yet? But yeah, you got gift returns, and, but thank you so much for choosing, and I'm the associate pastor. My brother is a senior pastor. Um, where's Pastor Mark at today? He's at our downtown campus preaching today. So can everybody wave to the downtown campus? They'll be watching the service a little bit later, um, the crew out there, but I want to thank you guys so much for coming. How many is ready for 2020? You guys ready? How many are almost ready? Yeah, yeah, get ready. Tuesday, you guys, don't miss, if I can reemphasize, don't miss that service. Um, you know, my father used to always tell me, and you tell Pastor Mark all the time, how you start is how you finish. So you want to start off right. I don't want to start off high on drugs New Year's Eve. I want to start off high with the Holy Ghost on New Year's Eve. And I tell you what, man, your year will start off right. It's going to end right. So be here at 7 o'clock. We love to have you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew 6.33. I want to jump in this. Uh, I don't think I've ever done this. I've, me and Pastor Marco, we're preaching the same message today. Um, he was at my house until about 10 o'clock last night. We were just exchanging notes, going over things. But this happens to be my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. Matthew 6.33. Actually, we'll start reading at verse um, 31. How many like me, um, you're starting to write down some New Year's resolutions? Anybody like me? Um, God, God told me the other day, or I was just there thinking about it, I haven't been to the gym in a month and a half. And is, and is anybody in my boat, have you missed the gym a little bit? You told yourself last year you'd hit the gym. And so I woke up the other day on Friday, or what's today? Today's Sunday. Yeah, Friday. I was like, you know what? I got to get to the gym. So I ran three miles Friday on the treadmill. Thank you. I'll take that clap. Thank you. I'll take the one. Thank you. Thanks for encouraging me. I'll take it. Thank you. And, I, and, and you know, I told myself, why don't I just start now rather than January 1st or 2nd? Let's start now. So when January 1st hits, I'm already running. And I believe that's what's going to happen today. That's what's going to happen on, on Tuesday the 31st. You're going to put God first right now, and he's going to stay first place in your life. Can you pop up really fast? As you're turning to Matthew 6, can you top up the, the, the top five on New Year's resolutions really fast? I don't know what you have written down, but here's the top five in America. A lot of times it will hit, and I'm going to show you in one, two. I'm going to show you in five seconds. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to show you in six seconds. One, I'm going to show you. And this is my fault. I just gave it to him, I think, during worship. It was my bad. I said, pop, you got to pop those on. Can you get them? Yes, no? Yes, yes. One of the top ones is um, getting in shape. How many want to get in shape 2020? Um, one of the other top ones is saving money. How many want to save more money? Or let me rewind a little bit. How many want to make more money? Then you can save more money, huh? <laughs> Maybe it's a top resolution. Maybe to give more. Maybe to, um, to restore relationships. We could have a list of 20, 30, 50 things, but today, there it goes, you got it, you guys are fast. I just gave it to them, so they're good. Limit your time on social media. Some of us, we need an exorcism for that one right there. I go to the store and the restaurants, everybody on their phones. Less time on social media, go to bed earlier. Go to bed, get some good sleep, cut down on drinking. Not cut down on drinking. I want you to be delivered from drinking alcohol. So I'll change that one right now. Exercise more. Practice self-care. Now, we can, we can have a list until we're blue in the face. But what we're going to learn today, this is the key ingredient. When God is first place in your life, everything else will be added unto you. Matthew 6.31, if you have your Bibles, turn to it. And for a title, I want you to write this down. If you're a note taker, write this down. God over everything. That's going to be a series that me and Pastor Mark will begin to minister on both campuses. Um, God over everything. 
Today is part one, is God over me. And in next Sunday, we're going to get ready for our 21-day fast. How many are ready for that one? All right, seven hands are ready for that one. So next week will be part two, God over food. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be good. God over everything. Look at Matthew 6.31. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Um, so if you don't have that there at your, at your chair, you might want to look on the screen. Um, it just really gives a good detail of this scripture. Matthew 6.31. Therefore, do not worry. Don't worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted. How many have ever been distracted or uneasy about something? saying, what are we going to eat? How are we going to pay the bills, in in other words? How are we going to drink and what are we going to wear? How are we going to do this and how are we going to do that? Don't worry, verse 32, for the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. But do not worry. Why? Here's the punchline. For your heavenly Father knows that you need them. How many of the God knows everything that we need? And verse 33, But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Now, to kind of sum up this whole scripture, I want you to write this down. The key is to prioritize God over everything. The key is to prioritize God over what? Over some of the stuff? Over everything, including us. Here's a good fact. When our priorities are out of order, our life will be out of order. Some of us are wondering, why is my, what's going on? Why are things out of order? One of the reasons why things seem like it's just out of order and it's not working because our priorities are out of order. God must stay first place in our lives 24-7, not just at church. I remember there was a a joke a while back, um, the, uh, the, the devil came into a service. And the devil came into a service and he was in the back row. And the preacher was like this. He started preaching, or, and all of a sudden, the devil just starts going hysterically in the back. He just starts laughing his head off. And he's laughing and laughing. And the preacher's just trying to ignore him and just going after it. And the, and the devil just keeps on laughing and just, ah! like the pastor said, the biggest joke in the world. So finally, the pastor stopped. He goes, okay, this, this is getting out of hand now. He goes, why are you laughing so much? He goes, it's funny. You got all these people here on a Sunday That's awesome. I get to keep them Monday through Saturday. (laughs) I got them Monday through Saturday. They're at the club on Friday night doing their thing. They're doing this on Saturday and they're doing this on Tuesday. I got them throughout the week. You only got them on Sunday. Here's a newsflash. The only way to serve Jesus is 24-7. Look at your neighbor and tell them, it's 24-7. It's 24-7 that God is first place. How many in here that God is first place in your life 24-7? I seen some honest hands say, I don't know if I'm I'm 24-7. By the end of this service, you're going to make a commitment. You're going to serve God 24-7. You know what? Declare this right now. God is over me. Can somebody say that? Now, you got to say it like you mean it. The count of three, say, God is over me. One, two, three. No, you got to wait till I count to three. You guys are fast. Here it goes. Now, say it like you mean it. One. One, one thousand. Two. Three. That's powerful. Is God really over your life? And maybe you're here today and God is not over your life. In about 25 minutes, we're going to give you an opportunity for God to be over your life. And once God is over your life, 
Here are some of the results. Write this down. What are some of the results when God is first place? What are some of the results when God is number one? Write this down. When God is over me, worry is not over me. That's what the Bible says, don't worry. No worry what you can eat, what you're going to drink, what's going to happen, how you're going to pay the bills, or what's going to happen to your auntie, what's going to happen to your, your mom, what's going to happen to your... When God is first place, you don't got to worry about things. When we allow God over us, we don't have to worry because God will take care of us. He'll deliver us. He'll save us. He'll provide for us. How many are a witness that God provides for you? How many are a witness that God delivers you from something? And that word priorities mean this. Write this down, priority. What does that mean? To arrange in order of highest to lowest in importance. From highest to what? To lowest in importance. For the purpose of deciding the precedence of the investment of your wealth, of your time, or your talents. What's taking the top priority Is God over me? Is God over my family? I don't know about you. You know, Christmas just passed, and people give me stuff that I have to put together. That's a nightmare in my house. How many are good at putting stuff together? How many pay people to put stuff together for you? Veronica is better than me in putting stuff together. Um, And I think one of the reasons is I have zero patience. My wife tells me every so often, and she needs to repent of this. (laughs) She tells me once in a while I got ADHD. Yeah, she says that. Lord, forgive her, Father. She'll she'll be okay. Because when you give me directions and follow this one and do this and do that, I'm like... I just want to skip, give me the product. I just want to see it work. See, things that are out of order never works. Can you put up that Coke machine just for a symbol? Do you have that Coke machine that's out of order? You could, how many of you have ever seen a Coke machine and you've seen it out of order? And you want something to drink. I don't care if that soda costs normally a dollar and you decide, well, it's out of order, but I'm going to put $5 in that thing. You could put $20 in that Coke machine. You are not getting a Coke. Why? Because the machine is out of order. How many of us are trying to get the right results, but we have the wrong order? God is saying, put me first and watch things work out. How many ever tried to do life without God? Where does that lead us? place of chaos. It's kind of like putting those parts together, parts everywhere, and nothing seems to work. But when God is over me, I don't have to worry about too much. I don't have to worry about nothing because God is going to take care of us children. How many believe that? Now, am I saying things are going to get easier? No, things are, they're going to get tougher sometimes. Things are going to get tough. I just seen the news yesterday. Uh, I'm a big news fanatic. Um, one of the reasons I watch the news, I, I, I want to see how the end time is playing out. I'm a big end time um, studier. I want to see how it's playing. I just see, did you see the news this week? Did you, did you put, pop that, that thing on the screen, the article? Iran, Russia, and China are joining forces. Now, if you know the book of Revelation... These are the three countries right here that come together. Our United States Army can't come against that. The only thing that's going to destroy that is God himself in the battle of Armageddon. We can't handle that. When I seen that, I said our military can't fight that. And according to scripture, it's true. The only person that's going to defeat that, his name is Jehovah God, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, in the battle of Armageddon. Why do I bring that up? There's going to be fights you're going to face in 2020. There's going to be things the devil's going to try to come against you. But I promise you, if you put 
God first, everything will work out. Can I get an amen? Are things going to come against you? Yes. The devil doesn't sleep. The devil doesn't rest. But I don't got to worry about the devil. I don't have to worry what's going on with Russia, Iran. All I have to worry about is making sure Jesus is number one. If Jesus is number one in my life, I don't got to worry about a thing. Now, if Jesus is number two in your life, man, you, sh you, you shouldn't sleep for a week. And the devil doesn't care how he takes that place. He'll bring unforgiveness. He'll make you mad with somebody in this room. He'll make you mad with somebody at your job. He'll make you mad at somebody in your family. Because unforgiveness clogs up the communication with God. The Bible says this, me and you can't even be forgiven unless we forgive others. You guys get that? He'll use drugs. He'll use a job. Every job that I've had, my mama taught me, look, you don't, you don't work on Sundays. And if you have to work on a Sunday, you'll go on at 1 or 2 o'clock after you've went to church. So one of my first real jobs was selling cars. And Sunday, oh my gosh, that was our day to sell cars. Back then at Moreno Valley GMC where I worked, we'd sell anywhere from 20, sometimes 40 cars in one day. If back in those days, that was 99 and 2000, when you sold two cars, they gave you an additional $500 bonus. When you sold three cars, which on a Sunday, you could do that. If you sold three cars on a Sunday back then, they called it the hat trick. And they would give you $1,500 bonus. How many know that's good money? If you were top salesman of the weekend, they would sometimes give you $2,000 for the top salesman for that weekend. So, man, you can make $5,000, you can make $10,000 in a weekend. That's tempting to skip church on Sunday when I was 99 in 1999. But thank God, Pastor Marco was my boss, one of the bosses. But he wasn't a big boss. He had another boss above him. I said, Marco, you, know, we, we, you know what mama said? We got to go to church on Sunday morning. I could come in at 1 o'clock, at 2 o'clock, at 5 o'clock, but I got to go serve on Sunday. I serve. I teach Sunday school. I teach youth group. I, I got to go serve. You know what mama said? He goes, I don't know. I'll talk to the boss, but we don't know. And, man, they would talk to the boss. Okay, we'll let you come in at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, but you better sell a car when you come back. Man. I'm going to tell you over and over in my life, and you've seen it in your life, when you've put God first, God will always come through. Come on, can I get an amen? He's good. You don't have to worry. Jesus commands us not to worry, but to trust him. Worry is not only self-destructive. I want you to write this down. Worry is not only self-destructive, but it's a sin to worry. It's a sin. That's why God commands us, don't do it. It will never lead to God's blessings or provision. That word do not, you know, Matthew 6, 31, do not worry. Let me break that down just for a second. Do not. What does that mean in the scripture? Do not means this. An expression, an absolute denial. I am not going to worry. That word do not means God forbid. God forbid if I start to worry. That word do not means never, never worry. No, none, nothing. The last one, reject. I reject worry. Why do I reject worry? Because God is first place in my life. And what he says in scripture will come to pass in my life. And not only in my life, in my family this will come across. Not only in my family, San Bernardino is turning around in Jesus' name. Why? Because we got a group of Christians. We got a group of Christians who is putting God first. So everything I begin to touch, I got the Midas touch with Jesus. How many want the Midas touch? 
How many want when you show up to a company, the numbers go up because you're in that company? And not because just you are in that company, it's because you put God first. How many have kids in this place? How many want their kids to serve God? How are our kids going to serve God? It's in the scripture. Put God first. If your kids see you come to church today, cussing out mama on the way home, what do you think your kid's going to pick up? Do you think your kid's going to pick up the Bible study that he got in the morning? Or is he going to pick you up cussing out mama or, or husband on the way home? Well, the word is powerful. The word is powerful, but they're looking at our example. So as the kids get a little older, they say, wait a minute, this is probably not real. I think mom and dad, this is kind of fake. Because I see, I see dad going like this. Then I see dad giving the bird on the way home. <laughs> Which one is real? I see dad getting drunk on Fridays and wrecking the car. But then I see dad going to church on Sunday and he's there. Which one is the real person? And before you know it, as parents, we're showing our kids one thing in church, but we're showing them another thing when we get home and what we're showing our kids when it comes down to it, that God is not first place in our lives. So when God is first place, we don't worry. Some will say, don't worry. If you have God first place in your life now, you guys got it. Number two, what happens when God is first? What kind of results do we get when God is first place in our lives? When God is over me, I will have everything I need. When God is over me, when he's over us, I will have everything I need, including physical emotional, relational, and spiritual needs. When God is over me, I have everything that I need. And that's emphasized in verse 33. First and importantly, seek him, strive after him, his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. See, God over us will always lead us to provision and increase. Write that down. That's a good statement. God over us will always lead us to provision and increase. Psalms 23, verse 1. I love this scripture. And I think Pastor Marco tapped on this a little bit on Christmas Eve. Look at Psalms 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Will lack nothing. Will lack nothing. Will lack nothing. When God is leading our lives, we will not lack nothing. We're not going to fail with Jesus. We're not going to fail when God is leading us. That word lack means this, to be without. To be in decrease. Or make lower. To have a need. To be in want. To cause to fail. How many know if God is leading you, he's not going to lead you to failure? I remember when we started this church. People tried to talk us out of it all day long. I've told you the story a thousand times. You're going to San Bernardino, you're crazy. There's no money there. There's no this there. When God is leading us, there will be no lack. Not only did we come up with the down payment for this building, we're going to pay off this property in Jesus' name. I got seven claps. I'll take it. I don't care. I'm going to say it again, Hank, because you're looking right at me. I know you're with me. Hank, not only did we come up with the down payment, Hank's one of our children. Our children's pack. Get it for Hank. Hank and Sue, do a wonderful job. <laughs> Hank, we're putting God first. So if we put God first, we're not going to be in lack. I don't care what this city is going through. I don't care that the state of California is pretty much bankrupt. We owe more money. There's not even enough money in the world to pay off California's debt. But I don't go off California's debt. I'm under the kingdom of heaven. How many are under the kingdom of heaven in this place? Give God a shout of praise. 
That's why we can come up with another 200,000. And the next step is now, we're gonna start to pay off all these properties one by one. Why? All we gotta do is put God first. That's why we're gonna continue going to adopt the block. That's why we gotta continue knocking on doors. That's why in January and February, we're putting God first by getting a foster home for 18 year olds that are being optioned out of the foster home. That's putting God first. When you put others first, you're putting God first. Write that down, that's a good statement. When you're putting others first, you're putting God first. So as this church continues to meet the needs of the people, we will write checks for these buildings. We go to Pomona and Chicago and L.A. As it begins to roll and God begins to move, we're going to start to write checks for properties. I believe it in Jesus' name because as God, we are not going to lack. We're not going to lack the anointing of God. That's why we could go into a prison with 400 inmates and 300 get saved in 20 minutes. That's the anointing of Jesus. You go to Pelican Bay of a guy that's killed 10 people. And he's in a little cell by himself for 23 hours out of 24. In a little cell by himself. And we can spend two minutes with that guy. And he gives his life to Jesus in two minutes. Because with God, we won't lack the anointing. We won't lack resources. We won't lack good relationships. How many want good relationships? What's, what do you got to do? Just put God first. Here's a shout out for Christian. Christian is getting married. Congratulations, Christian. You're in the back. Congratulations. He has a great relationship with his fiance. They wow, because God is first. How many dating right now? You're dating somebody. Be honest with me. I'll be honest, because some of us try to hide our boyfriends or girlfriends. <laughs> I'm single, Pastor, and I go to the movies, and you're holding a girl's hand. Oh, this is my, this is my girlfriend. She is. Man, you come to church every Sunday by yourself. And then this happens. It happens all the time. I'll look at the girl. i say, oh, man, what church do you fellowship with? And she says, I don't go to church right now. I've done it, because I'm crazy like this. <laughs> I'll, say, excuse, I'll say, excuse me, sweetie, you could, you could continue this date in a few. Let me, have a, let me have a word with my boy for a second. And I've done it at the movie theater. I said, what are you doing? What do you mean what I'm doing, Pastor? I'm on a date. Yeah, did you, did you just hear what she said? She says she don't have a church where she fellowships. Are you insane in the membrane? <laughs> That's not putting God first. How can two walk together unless they're in total agreement? I've been there, done that. I've tried to date people in college and doing things that weren't even Christians. I remember I, remember I was dating a girl. Can I say this, man? If she's watching, I don't even know if she watches anymore. Or she doesn't watch. No, she moved. I'll just say it anyways. I don't care. Just see what happens. I'll deal with it later. I'll deal. Can I tell you my business? Because someone needs to be set free from a boyfriend in this place, maybe. I'm going to save their whole life. I'm going to save 30 years of their life right now. 1999. Man, a lot of crazy things happened in 99. 99, I'm working. Right before I went to the car dealership, I was working at a bagel shop, and I met a girl. She's, she was a Mormon. And, you know, we believe different things. Okay, I'm not here to talk about Mormonism, but we don't believe the same stuff. We don't believe the same stuff. Okay, Mormonism is a cult. I'll just leave it at that. That's one other conversation. You join evangelism, we'll talk about more religions, okay? I was living at Pastor Marco's house at the time. And he found that I had a girlfriend. I was hiding the girlfriend. <laughs> hiding. So I remember Pastor Marco came to the bagel shop. I'll say the name because it's not even there. No, it's stuffed bagel, ranch cucamonga. So I was hiding this girlfriend thing. So Pastor Marco walks in and wants a sandwich. And he walks in 
seen me holding this girl's hand in the back. I said, let go of my hand. That's my brother. Let go of my hand. My brother just walked in. He don't know we're dating. And Marco said, Pastor Marco, he said, what was all that about? I said, that's my girlfriend. He goes, how come you haven't brought her over the house? I said, I can bring her over the house. He goes, what, what, what are you hiding? This is the middle of my shift, man. I'm just trying to make some sandwiches and get out of there. He goes, where, where, you, where, how come you haven't brought her to the church? How come I haven't, been, haven't brought her to meet Lisa, meet the family? I said, she's a Mormon. <laughs> he goes, what did you say? <laughs> He's okay, we get to the house, we'll talk. Finish your shift. I had things that were out of order. This was one of them. I get home, you can ask Pastor Marco. I get home, I had an upstairs room, and he, I don't know how he did it in this matter of time. He went to Berean, he did something. He went to Berean and got a bunch of literature. This is when he's had literature, Christianity versus other religions. And he had five of these things on my bed <laughs> with a video cassette. Back then he had video cassettes. Pop this video cassette in. I want you to really see what you're doing. You're out of order. I want you to look at this. You tell me what you think afterwards. If you still want to have this relationship, me and Lisa have a, a, a luggage already waiting for you. <laughs> Ask Marco later when you pass to Marco. You're going to get this luggage. Me and Lisa will pay for the tickets. You're going back with your mom and dad in Florida. Because anything out of order is going to attack this whole house. And I'm not going to allow this spirit to attack my children. And during that time is when Abriana came down with leukemia cancer. And he told me straight out, I'm looking for a doctor right now. I don't need this nonsense inside the house. I'm expecting a miracle with my little two-year-old girl. So if you can't get your priorities in order, me and Lisa will gladly play first class tickets. You're on your way back to your mom and dad in Florida. So I looked at all the cassettes, I looked at everything, I said, okay, Marco, Pastor Marco, I called him Marco back then, you're right. I'm done with this relationship. I ended the relationship, but then I picked it up again another three months later behind his back. During that time, my school grades went down. They were going to kick me out of Chafee, kick me out of Chafee College. Because in college, you've got to have a certain requirement. You can't just, just, just fail. They let you go. Everything was going chaotic. Well, good news is, you guys know I married Veronica, so obviously I let this person go, obviously. But it took me a while. Some of us are playing with some things right now, and the devil is not playing. He's not playing with your kid right now. He's not playing with your daughter right now. And God is saying, parents, let's, let's get things in order. Let's put God first priority because the fights are coming 2020. But I have good news. When Jesus is first place in our lives, I don't have to worry. I don't have to be in lack because God is first place. Here's number three, write this down, for time. What's another result? When, I, when God is over me, I like this one the best. When God is over me, I become more like him. I could become more like God now. The proof God is over us is that we're becoming more like him. We think like him. We love like him. We serve like him. We give like him. We have compassion like him. But here it is. In order to be like him, you have to receive him. In order to be like God, you have to receive him into your life. When we receive him, we receive the Holy Spirit, which gives us the power to be like him or his children. I like this statement, like father, like son. John 1.12 but as many as received him, he gave them the power. He gave them the power to be made the sons of God. To them that believe in his name. 
Now, to be like him, we have to be willing to let go of everything that's not like him. Please write that down. Take a picture of it if it's on the screen. To be like him, you have to be willing to let go of everything that's not like him. Letting go of the lust, getting low of the line, getting, getting, getting rid of things. And Ephesians 4 gives us a few examples. Throw off your sinful nature. Throw it off. And your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. When I have God over me, I start to act and I become like him. When God is over me, I don't have to worry about things. When God is over me, he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. When God is over me. And in these next few days, I'm going to give you a couple things or a few things we're doing as a church to make sure God is over us. What's the first thing we're doing this week? We mentioned it earlier. We're going to end and start our year in the house of God. We're going to have a New Year's service. What are we saying? God is over everything else that is being offered on me on New Year's Eve. God is above all that. Second thing we're going to do, starting next Sunday, we're going to get ready for a 21-day fast. And I know some of you guys are already thinking about it. Some of you guys are already asking, what are we fasting? What are we doing? How are we going to do it? And Pastor Marco will teach on that next Sunday. The whole sermon will be on fasting. We're going to fast. What are we saying when we fast? We are saying that God over food and every fleshly and sinful de desire, that God is above my flesh. God is above my own nature. God is king. In the month of January, we're going to bring a, a first fruit offering. We're going we're gonna to start tithing if we've never tithed before. We're going to start giving if we haven't given before. What are we saying? God is over every treasure that my finances can offer me. God is over money. Money doesn't control me. This job doesn't control me. God is over me, including my money. At the end of the month, we're going to go to impartation services. Starting in January, we got Leadership University kicking off. We got the growth classes kicking off on January 5th. And January 5th is a Sunday. Tuesday, January 7th is a Tuesday. That's when our classes kick off. And these are all new classes. And for the first set, um, it's really only going to happen really once a year. Uh, me and Pastor Marco are going to get involved in these classes. So Pastor Marco will teach when I'll teach when He'll teach half, I teach half. Our we're just going to pour into you as best as we can. And those classes kick off. And at the last thing, serving in the ministry. How do we have God over us? How do we practice that? Start serving people. Don't be so quick to go to church and just leave. This is good. But how can I serve now? How about kids? Any help over there? Hank, do you need help with kids? Do you guys need help with kids? I know you do. you got like 1,000 kids over there, like 1,000 babies. I don't know how you guys do it. Give it up for Kids World, man. I don't know how they do it. I think they had 150 babies the other day. I'm like, how do you guys do that? Teenagers over there. How can I help the teens out? The homeless ministry. You guys feed the homeless men. I'd like to be a part of that. How can, I, how can I bless somebody with that? Get involved this year. And I tell you what, when God is first place, you don't got to worry about nothing. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's message. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered. Don't forget to check out some other messages we have on our YouTube channel and share, subscribe to thewayworldoutreach.org. We love you. God bless you. Have an amazing week.